Good morning and praise the Lord. Reverend Lydia coming to you with the word from the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. May we rejoice and be glad in this day that he has given to each one of us. This morning I want to focus on the voice of God. Shall we please read 1 Kings 19 from verse 9b to 13. Verse 9, part B, to 13. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with their sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there after the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? The word of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, just to remind you that the Lord still speaks. The Lord speaks at all times. Although we often pay attention to the noise around us, the noisy environment often takes our attention more than the still small voice of God, causing us to fail, to notice and even identify God's gentle whispers. Elijah was at the edge of his life. He was running away from his enemies. He longed for death instead of life because of the circumstances around him. Jezebel was after his life, but he thought to himself he had served the Lord so faithfully, and he felt like, no, the only option he had was to ask for death. The truth is that Elijah needed help. Elijah could have missed the tender voice of the Lord if he had allowed the negative voices to overshadow him. He would have missed the voice of God if he had been distracted by the storm, the earthquake, and the fire. The Bible says that the voice of God was not in the storm, it was not in the earthquake, neither was it in the fire. But Elijah continued to wait. He stood waiting for the familiar sound of the God that he had learned to listen to. God still speaks. The question is, have you ever heard the voice of God? Has God ever spoken to you? God is always and is very willing to speak to each one of us. May we learn to tune in and listen to him. If you've never heard his voice, there is always the first time. Just desire to listen and hear his voice. He still speaks. And he wants to speak to each one of us. And for those who have forgotten how the Lord speaks, just tune in and that familiar still small voice shall re-echo in your ears. How does the Lord speak? There are many ways the Lord speaks to us. But I believe that the Lord speaks to us in his still small voice through prayer and his word. We can hear his voice as we talk to him in prayer. We can hear his voice as we read from his word. The Lord speaks clearly when we speak to him in prayer and when we open our Bibles to pray. 
happen to read the Bible. The Lord also speaks through his Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit speaks in many different ways, in diverse ways to each one of us because we are different and unique. He speaks to each one of us in a unique way. He can speak to us through his people, can speak to us through his word, through the preaching of his word, through life situations, can speak to us through nature, through creation, through the whispers. God speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. If God has a message for us, he will use anyone or anything to deliver it to us. But the question is, are we ready? May he find us ready when he sends his message. The Lord uses ordinary people, ordinary things, ordinary, ordinary ways to speak to us. Just tune in. And the fact that I also learned that the Lord speaks to us through our conscience. He brings convictions and burdens in our hearts. And these convictions and burdens can draw us to repent, to help people, to do things according to the convictions in our hearts, to return and redirect our lives. Never ignore your conscience. And please, never allow your conscience to be destroyed. Because through it, we can know good from bad. Through it, we can listen to the convictions of our heart. Brothers and sisters, May we cultivate the ability to distinguish God's voice from others so we can hear his gentle voice. Sisters and brothers, there is no emergence God cannot handle. We must learn to wait patiently on him, patiently to listen to him speak to us. Let us learn to separate ourselves from the noises and listen to God's wonderful voice. When we find ourselves in tough situations, it may be even in good situations, good or bad, helpless or hopeless situations, we need to withdraw and urgently tune in, listen and hear God's voice because God's voice is available to each one of us. Heavenly Father, it is our desire that we listen to you because we know you're always speaking. It is our desire that we learn to tune in and listen to your still small voice. It is our desire that we may not miss any moment you're speaking to us. Connect us with you. Help us to connect in prayer and in the word and be in tune with your Holy Spirit that we may not miss any conviction that we may not miss any delivery that comes from you. It is your voice that we long to hear. Thank you for today. Thank you for reminding us about you speaking to us. We open our hearts to you. Speak, Lord. Your servants, your children are listening. Sisters and brothers, may the Lord, my, my sisters and my brothers, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord surround you with his presence and may you hear the voice of the Lord. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.